During the last couple of years, my obsession with historical fashion has gone through the roof, and especially late Victorian fashion. Think 1890s, beautiful, big puffy sleeves, swooshy skirts, lots of details and trim, and... So I've been thinking, what if I were to make a proper big long coat inspired by the 1890s? In the 1890s they were obsessed with making your body look like an hourglass. Now they didn't generally do this by tight lacing their corset and cinching in your waist so tight you can't breathe, removing ribs and all of those horror stories. Generally it was actually a lot easier than that. What people mainly did was just make other parts of your body look bigger. If you have massive sleeves, a massive skirt, your waist will immediately look smaller than it actually is. I really fell in love with this period of fashion. I think it's very romantic. I think it's just very pretty. So I wanted to take inspiration from this era of fashion and create something that I can wear on a daily basis. I got this fabric at the market. It's I don't technically know what type of fabric this is because I'm really bad at telling. It's a fabric and it's soft. So that's all you need to know. I'm not actually going to use a Victorian pattern. I'm going to be winging it, which might not be a smart idea, but it's what we're doing. Tough luck to future me. So the first step was to create a pattern for the bodice. So I started out by making a mock-up. I'm going to make a mock-up out of probably this fabric since it's relatively thick. So I might actually end up using Gambit dress. It's basically from Mood Fabrics. They release a pattern. Similar dress like in the Queen's Gambit. I made the dress. It's the one that's always hanging on my door. Going down? Wait, I'll put it on. I'm going to zip it up now because <laughs> it's a zipper in the back. But the thing with this one, I like the swoop, it gives a good base, like if I then have it go down like that and then I can add lapels. So you have the back closed and then add this as an opening. I think that could be a good base. So I'm just going to try it out on the brown fabric, see if it works and what adjustments I'd need to make. I added a little extra swoop to this. This can be part of the button closure, so it overlaps. And then I can have two rows of buttons here. Cut out with using the pattern and then only this one will be different. I will need to figure out what lining fabric I want to use because I do want to be able to just use this as a proper coat and therefore I do think having it lined would make it last longer. I'm gonna go with this one because it's like a really thin breathable fabric and that way it will protect the seams but it will stay very light and airy this stuff <laughs> i have everything cut out so the next thing now is to cut out the lining fabric also zigzag those edges and then i can start putting stuff together all the pieces are cut and zigzagged so it's ready for assembling. Finished sewing the outer fabric. I added a dart at around the bust and I added two darts at the back. I also made the top shoulder edge slightly narrower. Also finished the lining piece. I normally sleep with braids in and for some reason this one fell out and this one did not. <laughs> it looks so silly. So here's what we're gonna do skirt wise. Basically I'm gonna treat it like how I'd make a, a Victorian inspired skirt which is having panels that at the front are not pleated and then panels at the back that will be pleated. So the back panels are wider. The front panel I need two of because they overlap. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to lay this out on the fabric because of course this is a directional fabric which means that if you put it upside down 
it shows, it catches the light differently. Okay, so I'm going to first cut it out in the brown fabric, lay it out on the green fabric, see if I can make it work, and if I can't, then I'll make the panel smaller. So I've got two panels on the big fabric now. Um, originally, I wanted to have it sit like this because the grain of the fabric goes like that. So it softs that direction and in those two directions, but not up. Just like the way that I cut the top. But this is going to waste so much fabric because I can't fit three of the small panels next to each other. And the big panels, I'd probably only be able to fit one next to each other. If I have these pieces, instead of laying like this, I put them like this. That would mean that it's soft in both this and this direction so it doesn't matter if I put it upside down and then in one of these directions so well that took way too much time I'm now going to zigzag over all of the edges so I can start attaching them I finished zigzagging over all of the pieces, which means I'm going to attach the back pieces of the skirt and the front pieces, but I'm not going to attach the front to the back yet because I want to insert pockets before I do that. So I cut it at the right angle. Um, I'm going to have to zigzag over that. But now comes the tricky part of deciding exactly how I want the pocket to go. So do I want it to go in a curve? Do I want it to be a straight line? How low do I want the scoop? So I think I'm going to go like that. So like that. So I made the little insert piece. You won't actually see this. And then this is the backing piece. I've zigzagged over all of the edges and I'm now going to insert it into the skirt by first sewing this to the skirt and then sew these to each other and then sew this edge to the skirt again. A voila, a pocket. I left a tiny little bit open here so that I can still add the band. It's not the deepest pocket ever. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to therefore make the band stick up a bit. That's going to increase the depth of the pocket. Et voila! I then added the bodice to the skirt piece on both the lining and the outside layers. Here's what's going to happen. I am going to attach a little inside pocket to the lining. I want to do that before I add the layers to each other. Otherwise you can also see the stitching on the outside and I don't want that. I want to put the pocket not on like the bust side because it's going to be quite tight around that. So I think I want to do it somewhere around like around the leg. So I decided to not put the little uh, thing on. For the sleeve, I've got this pattern piece that was part of a blouse pattern. So while editing, I realized that I had no clear footage of what I was actually doing and everything was dragging on forever. So let me just make a very quick rundown of what I did. I made a mock-up using a pattern from uh, an old project. Now that pattern, it didn't quite work, it was too small, so then I made it slightly bigger, it was still not long enough, so I added some length, and then that was sort of a basic, a basic sleeve shape. Once I'd done that, I could turn the basic sleeve shape into the big puffy sleeve that I wanted. So, we're just going to skip ahead <laughs> to the point where I started working on the big puffy sleeve. Hi, right sleeve. So I've got it traced on the white paper now. I am going to follow a tutorial by So Anastasia. I'm going to link it in the description. So the idea with this is that you cut all the way from here 
down to here then cut all the way down with all of these and you leave the tiniest bit attached here so that you can then maneuver it around and turn it into a new sleeve shape I've decided to again lay it out like this instead of like that Okay, so I just quickly sewed the sleeves together, also shortened them a little bit, they were a bit, a little bit on the long side. I want to now attach them at the cuffs. Now the brown one's inside the green one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the edge here on both sides. I'm first going to pin it in a couple of spots so it doesn't slide around. Then fold over the edges um, and then top stitch over that. So I put the brown slightly lower than the green so that from the outside you don't immediately see the brown. Now that the sleeves are done it is time to add the lining to the outside layer of the like the coat portion of the coat. Um, and I'll leave the collar open and the arms open so that later on I can add the sleeves and I can add the the lapel. I'm trying to figure out how I want to pleat the sleeves. I think from the pictures that I'm seeing, I'm supposed to be pleating upwards instead of down. Let me show you. If this is the bottom of the sleeve, so where the armpit sits, then when I'm pleating upwards, you have the loops like this. If I'm pleating downwards, then the loops fold down like this so i think i'm gonna go with pleats going up because that's what i've seen on actual historical pictures now the big question is whether i'm going to be able to actually do this by machine or whether this is just way too thick and it's going to break a needle so that sort of worked it uh made a little weird pucker here but I think I can I can fix that with a little hand stitch. I think it looks really cool. It's not comfortable. The, the fabric is so thick and there's so much of it that it just really digs into my shoulder. It means I'm never going to grab it to wear because it's just going to be painful to wear. I think I'm going to go for a slightly unhistorical look instead of the big puffy sleeves to minimize how much volume there is in the seam I might go with bishop sleeves even though it's not historical so you know there goes that idea I just want to come on here and explain real quick bishop sleeves are the type of sleeves with lots of volume at the cuff and sometimes a little bit of pleating at the top now I did end up finding some examples of bishop sleeves being used in the 1890s. So I can sort of justify the shift to bishop sleeves. Yeah, it makes me sad because I do really like the look of it. Um, the look is almost exactly what I wanted, yet it's just not comfortable. So appreciated while it's here because um, I don't think it's going to be here to stay. I just made a mock-up sleeve. Um, I think it looks good. It's slightly too long, so I need to shorten it slightly. Um, it doesn't really have any puff at the top now. Maybe add just a little bit more so this this tiny pleat here can become an actual pleat. I don't want a cuff that I need to close with like a button or whatever. I want to be able to just slide in and out of it. So I think I will shorten it slightly, um, but I don't think I'm gonna make the cuff any smaller because this is just a thicker fabric. The bulk of the fabric is going to sit in between these two layers. We're just going to close this circle up more. Also decided to not line the sleeves. I think that's just going to add extra bulk around here again and extra bulk and 
Yeah, so I'm gonna unline the sleeves or not line the sleeves. Added a bit of height here and I'm gonna cut it on this line and not that line. I'm just gonna treat this at these two layers as one layer, sew it on like a regular sleeve and then I might just use some bias binding on the inside just to finish that edge off. So it's on there now, the first sleeve. I mean, I still need to gather it, but yeah, it still has a little bit of poof, but this way it's so much more comfortable. There's a lot less bulk. I took it in quite a bit here. I also stitched down a tiny stitch in between the pleat here and like right there so that the seam sits inside the sleeve and not on top of my shoulder. So I'm going to add the other sleeve and then I'm going to add the cuffs. I'm hand stitching this hem. So what I do is I fold it over and then I sew through like the top layer of this and then through both layers of the fold. So both this little bit and the outside bit. Because this one looks so much better than this one. I mean, just look at that. And the inside. Yeah, this is, I don't think this is good enough. So I think I'm going to redo it. So I, I re-sewed it. Um, and I also put a little stitch in the top. You can barely see it, but it just keeps this um, in the right shape. So I'm just quickly drafting the lapel. So I think I'm going to follow this line here. I have this green fabric that I got for another project. It just means that if you get a little peek from underneath the lapels, it'll be a green and not a light brown. So I've attached the front piece to the back piece. I have this one lying flat. And then I lay this one with the guide marks on the outside. And then I will sew on top of this line, leaving this side open. So here's what I'm going to do. To attach the collar to the coat I am um, first just going to sew it on there just flat like I did with the mock-up then I will take this thick black bias tape and cover all the raw edges with that and then I've got this thin black bias tape and that is going to become a decorative edge on the outside so I've got it all pinned together, which means it's not going to slide around. Of course, these hairs, because it's soft and directional, it easily slides around. And I'm just going to sew really close to the edge. I've attached it. It's sewn on there, which means it's now time to add the bias tape. This I need to do by hand because I've worked with bias tape before. And no matter what I do... If I use the machine, it doesn't work for me. So I just I just have to bite the bullet and sew it off uh, on by hand. And then once I've done that, I can pin on the tape for the edge. Because it's quite late already, I'm just going to go downstairs, sit on the couch, hand sew, and I'll see you back tomorrow. So that took way longer than it needed to, but I added the bias tape on the edge and I'm now going to add the decorative uh, black edge. I'm just pinning it on first and then I'll sew it on the sewing machine. The collar is on and the details are on. And now it's time to hem the bottom because it's just too small. So I'm gonna add a dart in here, even out the bottom. As you can see, I cut the edge. I'm now going to zigzag over both of them at the same time, which will immediately join the two layers together. Then I'll hem it, fold it nicely, whatever. But first I wanna just clean off this edge. And there it is. I pinned all the way across, making sure that it lies flat so that you won't have any weird twists at the bottom of the seam. The plan for the buttons is 
that I have six buttons here. Those are functional buttons. So there'll be buttonholes with buttons that I can undo and do up. Those are the six functional buttons. And then for the rest, the whole bottom of the coat it's going to get fake buttons. So it's going to get the same buttons, but no buttonholes. And that'll go all the way down to the bottom. And that's sort of an aesthetic feature, not a functional feature. So that there. What I do is I go to three and then this decides how wide it is. I just want that on the widest. And then this is where the magic happens. Uh, I want it like that. So that's going to make it a really tight zigzag stitch. What that does is it creates this almost solid band of stitches. Each stitch is very close to the previous stitch. And that makes it very sturdy, very solid. No fabric is going to fray beyond the, the band. And it's a perfect button loop. My plant is looking really sad. So, anyway... Um, back to the project. I finished all the buttonholes, which means that it's now time to actually sew the buttons on. Go through, just make a little line. I'm now working on adding the decorative buttons which means I'm just going to see you in the final reveal. Let's just go through the things that I like and the things that I like slightly less. I'm really happy with the overall shape of it and the little details like the line on the lapel, the shape of the lapel I'm really happy with. I'm really happy with my choice of buttons and the fact that I chose to go all the way to the bottom. These pockets, I like the shape of it and it adds a bit of character to the coat. I'm really happy that I double hemmed it because it creates a slightly thicker border at the bottom which makes the skirt hold its shape more. I'm really glad I switched sleeves. The gathering at the top just having the three little pleats is so much more comfortable. Uh, and I'm really glad that I switched to this shape. I think it is a very romantic shape. I kind of underestimated that how thick this fabric is and therefore how chunky all of the hems and all of the pleats and everything would be. But, like, that's one chunky cuff. I'm really happy that it's finished. It took so much longer than I thought it would take, but that is sort of... I mean, I... I I do tend to underestimate how long projects take, so fair enough. I'm really glad it's done. It's not something that I'm going to immediately start wearing because it is more of an autumn winter coat and it's getting way too warm for that thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was slightly different than the previous videos, but I really enjoyed making the coat even though there were elements of it that were highly frustrating. Feel free to leave a comment down below telling me what you want to see me make next or what you thought of this project. Should I make more things like this? Should I go more in depth on the historical aspect of it or not? Like, just let me know. 
and while you're at it please like and subscribe if you haven't already i upload every other sunday and i will see you in the next video bye wow it's just too much let's just sit here for 10 seconds and calm down so let's sew this bad boy bad baby boy little fella up no, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. For this week's video, I am going to... Oh, there's a socket here. That's not professional. So I started out with making a mop-up. Mop-up. Mop, mop <laughs> yeah, wow, my brain is not working. Or whatever. Wow, wow. And it's not something that I'm gonna... I mean, I'm gonna... So that's what we're going to Ah, dear. I just want to come here on the look. Didn't attach them there yet. And, but didn't... Woo. No. Ah! So that's what we're going to be doing. Sort of. Well, no. Um, it's so warm. <sighs> Stepped in poo.